I am using a smoothie blender and some Diamond FX White. I always have the kids open their mouth so that I don't get any paint on their lower lip, whether I'm using a sponge or a smoothie blender. But if you find that it's hard for you to control the shape of the muzzle with a sponge, then switch to a smoothie blender like this. It's much smaller and just easier to manipulate, so it'll help you contain that muzzle. You can also do the muzzle in black if a child asks you for a black cat. That will give the entire cat a darker look. Or you can do a naked muzzle. Since this is a one-stroke cat, you actually do not have to do this step. You can skip it. So I'm just pulling that white up over the nose and then I'm doing the inside of the ears for the cat, just a little triangle and I keep the inside of the ear at the very, very corner of the eyebrow so that in the end I have a, a wider cat ear and then it's more spread out. Here comes the one stroke element of this cat. I have loaded up a three quarter inch regular brush from the face painting shop with my Susie Amaro unicorn cake, which is just a black and white cake, and it is becoming my most favorite cake in my kit by far. I am absolutely in love with this cake. I use it for everything, and I already need another one. And I just created the outer ear, and now I'm pulling a few shapes up to create the fur for the top of our cat. It's really nice to have a one-stroke cat option when you're on the job too because if you're painting a lot of kids using sponges can be really cumbersome and this is so incredibly fast. Um, I'm really, really loving it. So now I want to go over her eyes. So I'm going to flip my brush so that the dark black and gray is on the bottom and I'm just going to sweep over her eyes like eyeshadow and then I'm just going to blend it in. So now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and when I go over kids eyes I always tell them that I'm about to go over their eye that takes some of the anxiety out and you're not going to get as much flinching as you get if you don't tell them. I also if it's a little girl I say I'm going to give you some eyeshadow I'm going to go over your eye a lot of little girls play with makeup so they understand that. So go ahead and just blend this together. I'm taking my time but on the job I probably wouldn't be this picky um, so it really just quickly blends with the white and is quite nice so now I'm going to follow the muzzle around with the black on the outside and the white on the inside and I'm gonna meet the black on the inside of the eye so this is just pulling it all together and it's naturally blending that one stroke and it really makes for an effortless blend and you're not doing a lot of extra work. That's why this is ideal for on the job. One of the most sensitive spots to paint on kids are right under their eye. Before I paint underneath the eye, I say to them, I'm about to paint right here under your eye and I'll take my finger and I'll tap right there before my brush meets that spot. Now this has helped me so much. So I just say, I'm gonna paint right here under your eye. It's gonna feel like I'm really close to your eye, but I'm actually on your cheek. If you do that, you're gonna get less flinching, less kids opening their eyes, and it is going to save you. Especially the boys tend to be very, very sensitive around their eyes. So talk to them, tell them what you're about to do, and they will be prepared for it and they won't freak out. Mm -hmm. So for the cheek, I do just start right under the corner of the eye and I just wiggle my brush back and forth going down towards the muzzle. And then I do the same thing on the inside and I quickly fill in that cheek and it looks like fur because I'm wiggling my brush pretty quickly back and forth. And it is such an easy way to create fur. And then if you have to clean anything up, just go in and clean it up with the toe of that brush that you've got the black on. And I love using the black on this cake and just the toe of my brush to outline things. So I just swept it over the side of that kitty ear just to create an outline on the outside of the white. And then if you want to, you can go back in and blend things together and make them look perfect. But I am telling you, if I was doing this on the job and not in my studio, I would do this so fast and I would not worry too much about it being perfect. So at this point, 
I always like to spray the design with some glitter or tap some glitter on. I'm just using my glitter spritzer and my Mama Clown white glitter, which I love because it is so sparkly. And I'm going to give my sweet little model a nice sparkly kitty cat. I'm taking a dark magenta and I'm going to fill in the nose. I like to do cat noses down lower so they look like they're more feline. Um, if I'm on the job too and I want this to be even faster, I will take a medium size to small size filbert brush and just do two big teardrops on either side and connect them. And that's a really, really quick, easy way to make a feline nose. For the muzzle lines, I am taking a number six brush. This is the new pointed round from the face painting shop that I am obsessed with. And you can see I pulled it down and then pressed and wiggled to create that little V of the cat uh, mouth and then just pulled it up around. Now again, since this cake is really lined with black, you really don't have to do all of these steps. You don't have to line it. I do like to put that, those little fur lines on the inside of the ears because I always think of kitties of having those little furry, fuzzy ears. So I like to add that and then line the muzzle a little bit. But I'm not going to go around the fur on the edge. I think that just defeats the purpose of having an awesome cake like this with the black on the edge. So I'm not going to do that. Um, now my model is being so good and is definitely old enough for a little eyeliner, which I always think really, really makes the design um, pop and come together over the eyes. So I'm going to give her a little dramatic eyeliner and some little lashes peeking out of the side of this little kitty cat. But I try to avoid that on little kids or that kids, kids that are kind of wiggling and they're like ready to be done, then I just try to get done as quickly as possible so they don't lose it in my chair. But you can always gauge that. If you have a little model that is just loving every second of it and you can add details, add details. If they're totally over it, then just move faster and get them out of your chair because the moms are going to appreciate that too. They start getting nervous when they see their kids wiggling just as much as you do. So just finish them up and get them out. But of course, this is my studio and she is being awesome. So we're going to give her some extra details and make her kitty very, very pretty. So for the muzzle, I'm just going to pull some lines in and then I'm also going to give her whiskers in a little bit as well. To add a fun little element, we are going to grab this BAM star stencil and I'm going to do some stars on her cheeks. And I've grabbed the Leanne Courtney rainbow cake. Um, I don't know what the name of it is, but it's the only big rainbow cake in her line. The rest are splits. I cannot wait for her to make larger rainbow cakes, by the way. <laughs> So can I just put that out into the universe for Fusion and Leanne to make bigger rainbow cakes? Because I love her split so much. I need more than one rainbow cake, please. But I do love this cake. The neons in it are super bright and pretty. So I'm going to go ahead and actually get some of those pink stars on the other side because they're not popping as much with the uh, the greens and the blues and I really want this kitty to have some cute little stars now when you're stenciling on kids and they're pushing away like um, this little girl is doing for me you want to say to them push back towards me and that really helps so if they keep like pulling, pulling, pulling away from you. Just say, don't let me push you away. Don't let me push you away. And that usually works and they'll push back at you. And then you're not like pushing them off to the side like I just did. So I'm going to add some red lipstick. I'm using a disposable lipstick applicator. I get mine off Amazon. I will make sure the link is below. And I use the Too Faced Melted Matte Lipstick in my kit. I love that lipstick because it comes in some really unique, cool colors, like blue for mermaids, but it dries down matte. So when little girls go to eat cake, it does not come off. Um, I'm also going to put a little bit of glitter on top of the lipstick, which also helps it stay and stick. 
And really, you don't have to use the Too Faced matte lipstick. I would get something that is a liquid lip that dries down matte, and you will have less kids coming back for lipstick touch-ups, which I found before I did this and I was using face paint, it was constant through an entire party. I redid a girl's lips one day five times, I kid you not, and I was like, I am not doing that again, and I went and I bought lipstick. So any liquid lip will work, but I recommend trying it because I like using it much more than face paint. I love doing whiskers with a liner brush. So this is my face paint shop liner brush. It is long and skinny, and it just gives you those like irregular, really thin whiskers. And I just think they are so, so cute. So I usually like to do a couple in the ears too. Um, and I always try to make whiskers not so perfect because I just think it looks a little bit more natural. So I'm going to do a couple in the other ear and then our sweet little kitty is done. I hope you guys enjoyed this one stroke cat and that you give it a try. Thank you so much for watching and thank you to my sweet model and I will see you guys in my next video.